the Mars Ingenuity helicopter has taken flight. I just want to congratulate the team on an amazing historic first, first control powered flight on another planet. Just truly amazing. Ingenuity landed with its mothership, Perseverance, in February 2021. This really is a Wright Brothers moment. This morning, our dream came true. And thus far, is exceeding all expectations. The first flight of a powered aircraft on another planet. Drones have conquered the Earth and Mars. Next, they'll be heading out even further into our solar system. In 2027, NASA is planning to launch a one-of-a-kind spacecraft. Dragonfly is a rotorcraft lander that's going to Saturn's moon Titan, which is one of the most interesting places in the solar system, but I'm pretty biased. If all goes according to plan, Dragonfly will touch down in the 2030s and spend years exploring this exotic landscape. It's very cold there. It's minus 290 Fahrenheit, just above liquid nitrogen temperatures, and it's very distant from Earth. The mission could provide breakthroughs that could connect this frozen moon to Earth's past. What we learned from Dragonfly on Titan could potentially inform missions to other ocean worlds in the solar system. But first, it has to survive a billion mile journey, a cryogenic atmosphere, and a two hour descent. And that's just getting there. Ingenuity, part of the current Mars Perseverance mission, has successfully completed its initial test flights. This really is a Wright Brothers moment. It's the start of a whole new kind of planetary exploration and we'll build on Ingenuity's success to see how we can deploy this capability on future Mars missions. And returning these amazing vistas. It did it just perfectly. We really did leave the ground. Each step of the Ingenuity mission is critical to proving a self-sufficient drone can explore other planets. Swashplate servos appear healthy. Overall actuators appear healthy. This flight control confirming that we have EVRs from Ingenuity. When things work, um, it looks easy. I, I would like to take this opportunity to remind how difficult it is to fly a rotorcraft at Mars. The initial flight lasted 20 to 30 seconds and consisted of Ingenuity hovering at a small altitude above the surface. Having performed spin-up, takeoff, climb, hover, descent, landing, touchdown, and spin down. Ingenuity itself is extremely healthy at this point. All in all, it's in a perfect state, and I'm just really excited to see what all she can teach us over the next few weeks as we explore aerial mobility on Mars. With each subsequent flight, the engineers collect more data to help push the chopper further, in both distance and duration. Just in general terms, what we're talking about here is going higher, going further, going faster especially towards the end of the experimental window, we will be pushing the envelope and really stretching and understanding how well we can fly. Ingenuity has marked the beginning of otherworldly flight. Ingenuity is a technology demonstration, but it's a very important one for Dragonfly. It's the first extraterrestrial rotorcraft, and we've all been watching, hoping that it will succeed, and we're very happy with the success that it's had so far and it's a precursor to NASA's most ambitious mission yet, Titan, where the thick atmosphere allows for a much larger craft. Dragonfly's rotors will spin at about 800 RPM, whereas Ingenuity's rotors spin at about 2,500 RPM. While there are less distant places to visit in our solar system, Titan has the most going for it. It's because Titan is so Earth-like and so alien at the same time that it makes a fantastic target to study just as an explorer. Although the destinations are remarkably different, Mars Ingenuity proves a rotorcraft can not only survive the journey, 
but thrive in its objective. We don't have drones that, you know, survive minus 130 degrees Fahrenheit at night. We don't have drones that fly in 1% uh, of the atmosphere of Earth. This technological marvel is no off-the-shelf drone. I think everybody's seen a drone flying around, all these little multi-rotor copters that, uh, especially quadcopters, people fly. But Dragonfly is on a different scale. It's very large. The rotors are 53 inches in diameter. The lander itself weighs close to a ton. So it, it's very big. It's the size of a Mini Cooper on, on that order. A rotorcraft is the very best way to explore Titan because it allows us to both do pinpoint landings uh, and inspection and also cover large distances to be able to see vastly different locations on the surface, very different terrain, very different science objectives. Titan's atmosphere enables engineers to make Dragonfly 500 times more massive and fly almost 50 times further than its Mars counterpart. So it's actually much easier to fly on Titan than it is on Earth and someplace like Mars, which Mars has a very thin atmosphere. So it's actually much harder to fly on Mars than it will be on Titan. Titan has a thick enough atmosphere and low enough gravity that a person could basically strap on uh, some wings and flap around on Titan, kind of almost like a bird. So on Titan, the challenge isn't flying. Flying is easy. The challenge is the environment. It's very cold there. It's minus 290 Fahrenheit just above liquid nitrogen temperatures. And it's very distant from Earth. So that means that it takes a long time for us to send commands and receive data from the lander. With Ingenuity, NASA is able to give direct commands to the drone and even update software via an orbiting spacecraft. Dragonfly will have no such luxuries. It's incrementally autonomous. It executes sequences that we tell it to execute, and it does them autonomously because there's no way to communicate with the, the lander real time. But it does not execute the whole mission autonomously. There's a over an hour communication delay between Earth and, and Titan. The lander will need to essentially fly itself down uh, on its very first flight to a world that we don't have very many images. The images they do have are courtesy of Huygens, a probe dropped off on Titan in 2005 by the Cassini spacecraft. What Huygens revealed during its mission helped prepare the scientists for what to expect. We look at these landforms, these pictures from Cassini, and say, yes, those are clearly dunes that we're looking at. On Titan, these sand grains are made up of some bizarre organics that only Dragonfly is going to be able to tell us what they're actually made of. One element Cassini did confirm was that Titan is ideal for a rotorcraft mission. The Titan atmosphere is 10 times thicker and 300 times denser than the Martian atmosphere. But what that does for us is it creates a special challenge. On Mars, it only takes seven minutes to get through the atmosphere, whereas it takes us two and a half hours to descend through that atmosphere. Dragonfly is scheduled to launch in 2027 and travel roughly a billion miles before reaching Titan. Such an epic journey requires a special power supply. One of the enabling technologies that we're planning to use on Dragonfly is a multi-mission radioisotope thermoelectric generator, uh, or an MMRTG. And the way that works is it uses the decay of plutonium-238 to generate heat, and from that heat we generate electricity, and we use both the heat to keep the lander warm and the electricity to power the lander on the surface of Titan. Power that will be used to run cutting edge experiments. One of the pieces of data that I'm most excited to get back down on the ground are the data from the gamma ray and neutron spectrometer. It's a mouthful, but the power of this instrument is that it's going to look beneath the surface and tell us if there are sediments beneath where we're actually sampling with the drill. Every piece of data collection is critical to this and future missions. Dragonfly will adapt its mission as it goes. And what we have to do here on Earth is provide uh, the steps that the lander will take to do that and then rely on the lander's autonomy to execute those steps and make the appropriate decisions when the situation calls for it. Mars Ingenuity and Dragonfly are just the beginning if the two drones perform well, space choppers could soon begin leaving Earth in relatively large numbers. 
It's the start of a whole new kind of planetary exploration and will build on Ingenuity success um, to see how we can deploy this capability on future Mars missions. Dragonfly will be able to fly to dozens of promising locations on Titan. This longevity will greatly aid Dragonfly's search for prebiotic chemicals common on both Titan and Earth. One of the reasons we want to study Titan's ice crust is because it covers a subsurface ocean, an ocean of liquid water. And we know that there are organics on Titan's surface, so if there's any possibility of moving those organics that we're gonna sample with Dragonfly down through the ice crust to the subsurface ocean, then we start to talk about another realm of possible habitability on Titan. During its nearly three-year mission, Dragonfly will explore diverse environments from organic dunes to the floor of an impact crater where liquid water once existed. We want to know more about the history of Titan because the evolution of Titan may hold clues to our own past. We think that before biology really took over here on the Earth, it might have had an atmosphere that was kind of hazy, similar to Titans today. And the production of that haze might have been what helped seed wherever life really took off. What we learned from Dragonfly on Titan could potentially inform missions to other ocean worlds in the solar system. In space exploration, there are always questions that we don't even know to ask yet and Titan might tell us what some of those questions are. Meanwhile, back on Mars, Ingenuity continues to capture the hearts of explorers everywhere. Passing its first battery of flight tests with flying colors and paving the way for future flying machines on other planets.